okay, joint mobilization, this is one of my favorite parts of getting their shoulder better because it really helps improve the quality of the active movement. So we're gonna provide a passive movement of the shoulder joint when we go through the movement that she finds painful when she raises her arm, okay? So things like abduction or flexion, if there's a painful arc there or like an impingement type syndrome, doing a joint glide through movement is a really good way of almost tricking the brain a bit and trying to allow some good movement through the shoulder without pain, so getting rid of those sort of aggravation of painful structures, if you like, but also stretching the joint and putting in a position that is ideal when she moves. Because when you've got weakness in a shoulder and some compensation of other power muscles like pecs and delts and lats, there's a bit of like bullying going on in the shoulder, if you like. So if you've got a weak, sore rotator cuff, you've got a powerful pec, delt, and lat, when you move your arm, the big muscle's gonna do a lot of the work, and the little ones are getting sore. So if you can try and help that movement and help those little muscles out do their job by doing some joint mobilization through range, we'll find that that hopefully carries over into trying to get some activation going and helping with their strengthening. So now that we've released off the posterior cuff and the posterior deltoid there, what we can work on is I like working on getting that joint traction. So pulling that whole ball laterally, if you like, and then getting into an AP position, okay? Which is nine times out of 10, the position that they need to be in because when you've got a weak rotator cuff, the ball tends to go forward like that, okay? So if you imagine, if she had a stronger posterior cuff, all right, the ball would sit a little bit more neutral in the socket. So when I go through range, she has less impingement or less catching through that joint, all right? And we're providing that, probably that brain, her brain, with some pain-free movement, some natural pain-free movement in a good plane. And that's gold for her trying to achieve that natural neuromuscular movement she needs to do when she's riding up. The good thing about this is this is also part of your assessment. So doing some AP glides, you can work out, is she hypermobile at the back? Is it like really sloppy at the back? Is it super tight? You know, is there some clunking and clicking? Is there pain through range? You know, what's going on? You feel that little clunk there? Now she's got a bit of an unstable shoulder with this. So I've just got to be careful that I don't want to cause any aggravation. I've just got to try and get the right amount of pressure and the first thing I'm gonna work on is just, can I get her through past that 90 degrees abduction without a click and without some pain, okay? I'm not gonna go and jam her up and push her in there if it's too painful, okay? So the first thing is just trying to get some movement from below 90 degrees with an AP glide up past 90 through to about a 100, 120, and then come down. And see if, as you do that, does that click or that pain or grind or anything that's sort of noisy going on there slowly improve? And you might have to work on what we tend to do is adjust as we go, like how much pull and push do I need to get that movement better? So once I've done a bit of that, I'm then going to focus on a little bit of external rotation, especially if she's lost some of this movement here. So if you've got a patient that is sort of going back to here and then, oh, doesn't go very far further than that, and you find that if you give them an AP glide and they go heaps more, you know there's some sort of error going on there as far as what that joint mechanics is doing. So I find if I can get them in that AP glide and hold them there, and then work just carefully on how many repetitions can I get with external rotation and get that movement quality better. So there's one way of doing it, doing repetitions like that. The other way I also like doing it is trying to get some movement, if I put her in external rotation like that, and then glide her that way, okay? And it does depend on the, on the patient, which one you sort of work on. But once I've got that sort of movement, then I'm gonna work on some flexion. So this is like working on every little component that she needs to get her arm over here. Now, this admittedly, you need to have enough sort of flexion range first to get up and do this, otherwise it's extraordinarily difficult. So for her, I'm gonna to have to get in there behind that shoulder like that, and then my AP glides that way. But I'm going almost a little bit keflad, if you like. So a bit of that way and a little bit that way. So if I pull it out, not pull it out of the socket, but give it a bit of traction, then glide her through here, then I can slowly push her, watch her face, see if she's wincing or not, and get her into flexion. So I'm using my sort of 
body weight if you like, but keeping that joint completely controlled. So holding it, pulling it out, APing it as you go, almost like a mulligan MWM if you like. So I'm gonna AP as I push her into flexion and give her a bit of traction. So I'm basically giving her the pain-free flexion that that joint needs and she can't do by herself, all right? And so you're stretching all the structures and you're giving that joint a nice movement through there, which triggers the, if you like, the subconscious a bit to say, hey, you can do flexion pain-free and that'll help her trying to do it by herself, okay? Because otherwise it's pretty hard to get, you know, a shoulder actively through range if there's so much guarding going on. So this will give you that sort of pulling away of the structures that hurt, so they're not touching each other, and getting her through that movement, which is giving her, you know, stretching and movement above head, which she can't do by herself. And that'll really help her go and do the active and you know, strengthening movement that we want doing. So we've covered sort of like your abduction, externalization, flexion, and then I like putting it all together. So once I've sort of loosened it up a bit, she's feeling better in every range, then what we've got to try and do is go through the full external rotation, abduction, and then interflexion. And I've just got to watch here, like, is this going into pain or not? Making sure she's got enough AP there. So when she goes through, we want to try and get that movement better without her getting sore. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm just sort of going to go, okay, can I keep pushing her? through there and you'll be quite surprised once you do a few of these you might have to start with not the full range all the way through give her a rest a pair see how much she needs i'm getting a bit of traction here so i'm going that way at the same time and then going through getting that external see what see i can do the external rotation there and then right into abduction which hey is basically a shoulder press movement right and, you know, and there'll be, we'll be spending 10 minutes on doing that, trying to get as much range so we can sort of clear a lot of that stiffness and guarding that's going on from protection type movements, if you like, from brain to shoulder and give that shoulder a bit more experience. But remember, with people like Elise, who's got a bit of an unstable shoulder, we do, yes, have to get rid of the muscle ties to the back so it can actually function a little better, get rid of some of the joint sort of stiffness and guarding but can't leave her with an unstable, loosey-goosey shoulder. Because if she hasn't got the strength, it's just gonna tighten up again, okay? And then she's gonna sort of go away, feel worse, if you like, from having treatment. So this stuff is enabling her to go, okay, this feels better to go and then go, okay, I need to stabilize this. And so it's very important from this point, for someone who's got a bit of an unstable, weak shoulder, she goes and then trains it and does her rotator cuff work, does her scapular work to stabilize it from there to there so it doesn't go back in a spasm. So there's our treatment for today. See you next time.